Hello, I'm Dr. Joshua Broadwater. I'm a veterinary ophthalmologist at the Charlotte Animal Referral and Emergency Clinic in Charlotte, North Carolina. The purpose of this video is to talk a little bit about intraocular pressure inside of an eye and why we measure intraocular pressure inside of our patients, our dogs and cats, and how we measure intraocular pressure inside the eye. The most important reason that we measure pressure is for a disease called glaucoma, which is a high pressure inside the eye that if left untreated, leads to vision loss, blindness, and pain, unfortunately, in our, our patients as well. And so if we can diagnose this disease early in the course of it, our hope is that we can start treatment to preserve their vision for as long as possible. There are several ways that pressure is measured. There's Applanation tonometry, which is one method, and there's rebound tonometry, which is the other method. Applanation tonometry deals with the amount of pressure that it takes to applanate or flatten a sphere, or in this case, it would be the cornea. And the pressure inside the eye is equal to the amount of pressure that it takes to applanate that sphere or the cornea. The other route that is used with the rebound tonometer takes an instrument where a little probe from within that instrument jets out and touches the cornea and rebounds off of the cornea. And that allows us to get the pressure that's inside the eye based on that rebound effect from the cornea. Um, each method has its um, benefits to use and several ophthalmologists use several different um, uh, methods. Um, in today's video, we're gonna talk about rebound tonometry and its importance and the advantages to use in that um, instrument, in particular the Tonovet that we'll talk about from eye care. The Tonovet has several different features to it. We'll be able to see that when we turn it on, this is the little probe that jets out and lightly touches the corneal surface to rebound off of the eye to be able to give us the measurement that's inside the eye. A um, couple advantages that this instrument has is that since this is a gentle probe that lightly touches the surface of the cornea, and just a little demonstration here, you can see the probe that juts out and lightly touches the cornea. And no topical anesthetic such as Preparacane or Tetracaine is needed in these cases um, as compared to applanation tonometry where it is necessary in those cases. Topical anesthesia, it can lead to dryness of the cornea. It can affect the corneal health over time. And so if we can avoid using a substance like that, it's ideal. And so with the Tonovet, um, that's something that we can avoid since this is a gentle procedure to the cornea and it causes very little um, sensation or feeling to the cornea that the animals even feel. So it's a, a great method to be able to, to utilize. Um, the way that the um, instrument measures pressure, you can see the little display here. It'll take about six different readings to give us our ultimate reading at the end. Um, if the instrument is located too far from the eye, it'll tell you too far. If it's too close to the cornea, it'll tell you that it's too close. It also depends on a good positioning. So for this instrument to correctly work, we want to make sure that it is in the correct position. If it's tilted down too far, this light will appear red. If it's tilted up too far, this light again will appear red. If it's in the correct position, this light will appear green. And that's the position that we want to use this in. It's ergonomically friendly from the point of view that we're able to use it right next to our patient, right next to their head, and be able to be within about an inch or so of their um, eye to be able to appropriately use this so it bounces off the cornea. And if you're unsure of your positioning, the instrument will let you know if you are again too close or too far. And based on that, you'll be able to hopefully get an accurate pressure. There's a lot of things that can unfortunately falsely affect our pressure. And in most cases, we get a false elevation of our pressure. So to have a very wiggly um, patient, 
um, who needs a great deal of restraint to hold them, the more pressure that we put around the neck or around the head can falsely elevate pressures. Same thing as the person who is taking the pressure. If I put too much pressure around the eyelids to hold them open, any extraneous pressure around the eye will lead to a false elevation of pressure inside the eye. And so it's very easy to get a false elevation of pressures and falsely diagnose something like glaucoma. So making sure that we are restraining our patients appropriately with someone to hold the patient, making sure that as the person taking the pressure, that I'm applying appropriate forces around the eye to be able to accurately check the pressure. These are all very important things to accurately diagnose diseases like glaucoma. So when demonstrating how to use the Tonovet, there's a couple things that are important to remember when using the instrument and when restraining our patient. And this is Tucker and Lauren who are gonna be helping us out today. So when using the Tonovet, the first thing we're gonna do is basically calibrate the instrument to make sure that it's um, calibrated correctly and ready to use. Once it is, a couple things that are important. So we wanna make sure that that light is green. So if it's tilted in the wrong position too low or too high, you'll see the light appear red. If we're in the correct position, that light should appear green and we should be able to correctly check our pressure. When checking pressure, a couple things that are important. Um, ideally, we have a patient who is not struggling or wiggling a great deal, so we try to um, wait that out, let them get their wiggles out to the point that they're holding still and we're able to apply minimal restraint because the more external pressure or restraint we apply, um, the higher we may get a, a false reading and a false elevation of pressure. As the person checking the pressure, we want to try to put minimal exertion or pressure around the eyelid so again, we don't falsely increase the pressure. So we'll demonstrate how this is used. And again, this little pin is essentially gonna jet out of here and rebound off of the cornea, but the animal typically does not feel this or it's something that is um, lightly felt. So no topical anesthetic is needed as it's something that's not painful and not uncomfortable to them. So Lauren, as she's holding here, we're trying not to put any pressure around the neck that can increase the pressure of the eyes. Um, for myself, we'll basically put very light pressure around the eyelids. Not much is needed since they don't feel this on the cornea. And when we check pressure, making sure our light is green, we're gonna go ahead and hit this button about a total of six measurements. If we're too close, the instrument will let us know. If we're too far, it'll let us know. And we'll basically wait till we get six accurate measurements to check the pressure. And so in the right eye, the pressure is 11. We'll recalibrate and we'll do the same thing on the left eye. pressure is 10 on the left eye. So you can see how accurate this instrument can be and how important it is for proper restraint um, to make sure we're accurately measuring pressures and um, trying to find different diseases like glaucoma, which is the most important reason that we check pressure because of the importance of glaucoma in dogs and cats that can lead to pain, um, partial vision loss, or in some cases, total blindness. So getting pressure and getting an accurate pressure is very important. So this is another example on checking intraocular pressure in dogs. This is Zoe. She's gonna also help us out today on getting our pressures checked. Are you ready to get your pressure checked? Okay, let's do it. So ideally, our patient will have minimal restraint. So sometimes our, our Puppies and our kittens are a little wiggly when we check the pressure, so we wanna make sure that um, we have all the wiggles out and we're able to restrain minimally around their head, around their neck, around their eye. When we do check pressure, we're gonna check with the tono vet. We wanna make sure that we have our instrument calibrated, ready to use. We wanna make sure that our light is green in the correct position. We're gonna start by measuring the pressure in the right eye. We 
we get six different readings, so our pressure is 19 in the right eye. We'll recalibrate and we'll check the pressure in the left eye. So the pressure is 16 in the left eye. So again, by making sure that we have appropriately restrained the patient, we're not using too much restraint, too much force, and not getting a false increase in pressures, we can make sure that we're um, accurately checking the pressure to be able to diagnose different diseases like um, specifically glaucoma that can cause pain and vision loss. Also helps with uh, diagnosing different diseases like uveitis where, where we can see low pressures and that can aid in the diagnosis of diseases like that. So making sure we appropriately check pressures will help us diagnose um, those diseases that are important in our field of veterinary ophthalmology.